Happy Thursday, everyone. I think I'm connected. Hope everyone had a great week. And uh, where am I? So last week we discussed... Jasper, what did we discuss? I don't know, because I wasn't here. He wasn't here, but he's here tonight. <laughs> Look, we have Jasper back. So Hello. I hope everyone's having a great summer and having a nice week so far. And tonight I want to discuss a couple of things. Um, I, I, my topic is what a, is a life guide. But before I get into any of that... I want to uh, just say, if you want to schedule an appointment for a reading, the most efficient way is to go to philquinn.com, go to my available calendar, and the times will pop up. I rarely ever have last minute appointments, so if anybody emails me and they're looking for a last minute appointment and you don't hear back, it's simply I rarely just have don't have them. But if I do have them, they'll be available on my online calendar. So, And also, if you want to be part of the Phil Quinn Friday Nights, you can go to philquinn.com also and schedule that. So now that we have that out of the way. Um, so tonight I want to discuss what is a life guide. And this is a very important piece to what I do for a living. And how it all began was, as you know, um, and as I've talked about this here many times, as a medium, my job is to be the intermediary between the other side and the living. And I simply rep I repeat back exactly what the other side tells me. I don't interfere with the communication. I don't question the communication. I don't ask because none of it relates to me. So my job is just to simply deliver. Well, as you come in and sit down, your family members come through, whoever it is that you've lost, why it's grandparents, why it's parents, why it's siblings, best friends, whatever the situation may be. Those people come through and they'll say who they are, how they died, their relationship to you and what's going on in your life. And then after a while, what happens is the other side's main job is not to just come through and let you know, I'm here watching over you. I'm here guiding you. Their job is they see your path. They see the path that you're on. So what they'll often say to me is, Phil, the path that so-and-so is on, my kid, my grandchild, whatever it may be, is a good path and or not such a great path. So because they see ahead of time, they can tell me what's going to happen if you continue this path. So this has been going on for many years, and I've given the information back to everybody else, and I, I couldn't figure out what we, how we were going to do this because a life coach you see on a regular basis, okay? And you work with that person, and you work through your issues and things like that. But then I came up with the phrase, and I sh shouldn't say me, it's, uh, a good friend of mine came up with the phrase life guide, because what was happening was your family members are coming through and they're giving you guidance about how to get through your contract and how to get through your path and how to overcome whatever situation that you have going on in your life. And the most important part is they give me A, B, and C so it doesn't have to get messy and ugly. Hey Glenn, hi everybody. So however, we may not want to take advice and therefore allow it to get messy and ugly. But the term life guide got coined by a friend of mine and that's what I've, I've used ever since because these readings are more than your family members coming through. These readings are about giving you guidance about how to get through your life, how to overcome grief, how to get into a new job, how to exit and or enter into a relationship, how to get through these phobias. The difference between a life coach and a life guide, and to my knowledge, I'm the only life guide is, I think I own the, um, that title, but the difference is in an hour, that's all I'm given is one hour to change your life. That's it. I don't want to see somebody repetitively unless certain things are happening in their life and they need to come see me. But the other side knows that I either have an hour or a half an hour, depending on whatever you schedule um, for your reading, and they're going to condense as much information as they possibly can into the reading in order for me to deter to give you the best advice you possibly can in order to go forward with your life. Now, most importantly, the other side doesn't give opinions. They, they tell us, look, here's really what's happening and this is what's going on. If you continue this, it's matter of fact, these are going to be the end results. If you alter your past slightly, these are going to be the end results. So they don't just come through and give you suggestions about what you should do. They, they will ask you, look, if this is where you want to get to, here's the best path for you to go down. 
Again, why it's a relationship, why it's getting into a new job, why it's exiting out of a job, why it's purchasing a car, what, what college that you're going to. I deal with a lot of college kids who um, are struggling about what schools to pick and um, what's the best area for them and most importantly, what field should they go into. And what happens is your family members will come through, their grandparents, siblings, whoever it is, and they'll say, here's your strengths, here are the things that we're working with. And here are the things that you're not strong with. Now, I've always said knowing my weaknesses is one of the greatest gifts that I ever had because at, at least I know the playing field. When people hear about their weaknesses, they think, oh, well, I'm not good at that. I shouldn't try. No, this is what we have to build on. So the other side can say, great, you're, you're strong at math. You're strong at science. You're strong at writing. Um, maybe you're not good in you know, a couple of other areas. So you may want to go into engineering or you may want to go into medicine or you may want to go into this. But Phil, I have a phobia. So what they do is they talk me through the phobia and what they do is they download this information very very quickly so they download this information and then I give it back a lot of times people think it's me giving them advice and I do not give advice what happens is I keep forgetting to tell you your family member says it gets a little old after a while so just it's always coming from them because if I was to give my personal advice believe me you would know the difference and it's <laughs> you know but when it comes to the other side they're very clear they're very concise and they know exactly what's the best way for you to get there. A lot of people will reject um, direct communication when it comes to overcoming a fear because they don't want to confront that fear. But again, as we know on contracts, um, the contract that we made spiritually coming here, we have to face it one way or the other. You can avoid it as long as you want. You could be 70 and still trying to get off the starting point. So it, it's very important that the other side helps us move down. That's why they come into your life and, and they, they, they push us into things. They push us into uh, situations to try and help us overcome those phobias or overcome those fears. So nothing really is by chance in that, in that design. The other side's main job is how do I get you from A to Z without lumps and bumps and all of that. That's where humanity comes in. We tend to um, you know, complicate things ourselves. So really what a life guide is and, and what my readings are is a condensed version of 10 years of therapy. And I will tell you this here, people often say this to me that Phil, after having a session with you, it was like my, all my years of therapy were condensed. Now listen, I'm not patting myself on the back because that's not Phil doing that. I am the middle guy. I just repeat back what they, what they tell me. But what I can do is get to the core of what's stopping you from moving forward with your life, moving forward with your relationship, moving forward with your career, moving forward with basic or any choices. I can help you overcome that. I, can, I work with people's kids and younger kids who are struggling through high school or struggling through college and we get exactly to what is causing the issue and how to eliminate it and what are the healthy steps to do that. And all of that information comes directly from your family members. None of this is coming from me. What they do is they show me the path, they show me the easiest way, I deliver to you. Hopefully, you'll take their advice. If you don't, then you continue to get your lumps until you're ready to move forward. So, but the other side, again, I want to stress this, does not give opinions. If they share something with you, it's for a very important reason. It's because they want you to evolve and they want you to get past um, certain things. So that's the main um, part of that. I think I see a hand there. Go ahead, Jasper. Um, so where does the advice come from? Is it um, always from a loved one or could it be from my angel or my guide? So the advice comes from one, uh, so one of those sources that either comes from a family member, it comes from a guide, or it can come directly from your angel or whoever's acting in your place. But what they'll do is they'll come through and they'll say, okay, Phil, this person's exiting out of a marriage and or entering into a relationship. This person is fighting for custody. This person's trying to you know, um, deal with their divorce, whatever the situation is. And then I say to the soul, hey, tell me the fastest, easiest way to get this person to where they need to be. Meaning that they wanna overcome this. They want to get out of this. They want to address this. And the other side will give me almost a game plan on how this works out and how this unfolds. And then if we follow the game plan close enough to it, hopefully we get to the results. Now, if you're looking to be vengeful, if you're looking to overcome and get by on somebody or whatever, the other side's not going to have any part of that. They're not going to help you screw somebody over. But what they are <laughs> going to do is they're going to help you get out of a situation if you're being screwed over. The other side can never use their knowledge for you to be vengeful. You can choose to do that, but the other side wouldn't come through and say, we're gonna get this person, this is how it's gonna happen. That's not how any of those things work. So it's, um, 
it, it's very important that you know that their their prime purpose is nothing but it's grounded and it's spiritual it has nothing to do about um, being upset with another individual or anything like that it's really a lot to do with justice go ahead Jasper how far ahead can they see over there do they see the future and advise accordingly so I always tell people that the, the best way I can describe to you is how far does the other side see is they say it's six to eight months ahead of time that's as far as as far as they'll show me they're not going to show me something that ha happens two years from now because your path can absolutely, um, you can go off your path, you can end, you can do all of this. So it would have no purpose of showing me something that happens two years from now. They're only going to show me the information that's relative in your life at this moment. So they're not going to tell me what's going to happen five years from now because that can change because you you have free will and at any given moment you can um, you can switch over. Go ahead, Jasper. So uh, what if I don't like the advice that I get? <laughs> so what if I don't like the advice I get? And that's a, that's part of the problem also is that some people don't like the fact that the other side is not agreeing with their way of doing things. So I have people that just tell me I'm flat out not doing that. And my reply <laughs> to them is it's not my life. It's not my journey. You can choose to do whatever you want, but you've been banging your head against the same wall for the last 10 years no change let's try something new let's be open to a different idea I think some people get insecure with the fact that oh I couldn't see that or I didn't do that and here's the difference I'm a neutral party so I have no emotional involvement in any of your readings so for everybody that comes in here I'm a neutral party so as long as I keep this vessel um, ma maintained meaning that myself opened and I can share the information with you that's simply my job but I don't put my spin on it because it has no bearing. I only, my job is a medium, and this is the rule from the other side. I have to repeat everything they say, no matter what it is, why you like it or not. Now, they don't come through and say, beware of a red car, because that makes no sense, right? But what they will tell me is, I'm sorry that I behaved this way. I'm sorry that I cut you out of the will because I was listening to another um, sibling or whatever the situation may be. I'm sorry that I betrayed you. I'm sorry that I hurt you. And just because the other side will apologize to you doesn't mean that you have to accept it either, but at least that is being put out there. But part of their whole journey is please don't repeat the mistakes that I made and try it this way. So that's their whole purpose is to get to guide you and to evolve you and to do that. I see a hand. Go ahead, Jasper. Uh, so why would the other side care about my marriage or whether or not I take a new job? Why would the other side care about who you're dating or who you take a new job or whatever? Well, let's just say you have kids. Let's just say that um, you don't have kids, but the situation is um, I'm miserable in my job. If you're miserable in your job, you're going to be, it, it could translate and or overlap into your home life. If that misery continues, then that could affect the kids, could affect the spouse, all of that. So the other side cares because they don't want to put you on a path that's not healthy for you. The other side cares because they're seeing that, well, if we don't fix this, the rest of this side is going to fall apart. So that's why they care, because they don't cross over and stop loving you. Go ahead, Jasper. Uh, Vincent says, uh, when I'm going through something, I often see red cardinals in my backyard. One time I saw an eight foot angel, um, eight foot tall angel in my dream. Are they trying to get my attention? So cardinals are a representation of the other side just saying hi to you. And angels, uh, dreams of angels are them coming through and saying that I'm, gui that I'm guiding you and I'm, I'm helping you and I'm saying hello. So it's not just getting your attention, it's just letting you know that they're with you and they're aware. The other side will use many different tools to give us um, different signs. Go ahead, Jasper. Uh, how do they introduce themselves to you? I dreamt of mine. He told me he was an angel. His name was Daniel. I know I know. I talk to him daily. Just want to make sure it's him. So I often tell people that the best way to talk to your family members or guides, Maggie, is just either speak in your head or speak out loud. The most important thing is that we address that there's somebody with us and there's somebody there. And as time goes on, people will then continue, the other side will continue to manifest and communicate with you. So that's part of the way uh, that they do it. It's the most easiest way for anybody to continue that. So. Um, I hope that answers your question, but the more that you talk to the other side and the people that you've lost, the easier that it, it's going to be for them to communicate with you. And it's, um, hi Katie, and so again, their whole purpose and their whole job was is for you to get to where you want to be and achieve the goals that you want to achieve the easiest way they know how without complicating it. Humans tend to complicate things. Spiritually, we tend to just um, put our um, 
Spiritually, we give get direct information. Sorry, somebody's talking to me. That's why I stutter. Spiritually, they give us communication where it says, here's the easiest way to do it. Don't mess around. Follow this recipe and everything's going to work out. So that's really what a life guide is. That's, that's the best way for me to explain to you how a reading works. Two things are happening here. You're coming in. You're talking to your family members. And the second part is they're going to then guide you and help you get to where you need to be. They're going to help. They will address the things that you don't want to address. I've had people sit in the room. There's been tough topics that they don't want to bring up. And I'm the one that has to bring it up because the other side is asking me to address it. That's just part of the process. They'll never say anything to embarrass you. They're never going to call you out in front of a group of people or anything like that. So you never have to worry about that. If you're part of Friday nights and it's an open group and it's not family members, the other side would never say anything that's going to embarrass you, upset you, or hurt you or anything like that. They're very aware of our emotional needs. So therefore, it's very important that when we do get help from them or whatever, we acknowledge them. Go ahead, Jasper. Uh, so Rita says, I talk every day. I don't feel the presence. I do believe in signs. So we don't have to necessarily feel the presence of somebody or the other side in order to get communication or feel them around you. One of the things is no news is good news. So if you're not hearing anything, it means everything's going great. So, and that's just the way that we leave it. Go ahead, Jasper. Joanne says, I, have, I just have to say that I've been struggling and Gary has been helping me. Aww. Things have been happening in my life that are helping me now. I believe this with all of my heart. Oh, Joanne, I'm sorry to hear that. And I'm, I'm so glad that you're coming out of the other end of this here because I know it, it, it hasn't been an easy road and, and, and Gary will always help you. He loves you. Go ahead, Jasper. Uh, Kathleen says, when we are listening to you, dear live, are our loved ones talking to you? Yes. So thank you, Kathleen. And, and here's one of the things that I've, I'm trying to figure out. Um, I don't think I'll ever do readings FaceTime live. It's just, you know, it's hard to read you right now when you're on the other end of this computer. If we were FaceTiming, it'd be a different story. But right now, as, your fam as, as, as you guys start popping in, souls are starting to pop in over here and they start chattering in my ear. So what happens is I'd have to tune you guys out and tune in to them to really hear what was going on. So there would be a pause here, there'd be dead air, and then I'd be doing this and then it would just, it just doesn't work. Well, at least I haven't worked that part out yet. But yes, any time that I'm communicating with people, their family members come in. Go ahead, Jasper. Uh, Stasia asks, are there things that we can do regularly to be more open to hearing from them? So one of the things that we do regularly for opening from hearing from the other side is simply say good morning, good afternoon, or good night. We just, whoever it is that you're looking for, um, whoever it is that you're trying to get communication with, we just simply say good morning, good afternoon, good night, thinking about you, I hope you're well on the other side. And then slowly but surely we start getting communication from the other person. Again, if you're not getting signs, if you're not getting communication, it means that you're you're in a good place. No news is good news. I cannot stress that enough. Sometimes we're just not aware. Sometimes we're just, we're, we, we're so distracted, we're so chaotic, we have so much going on that we don't even see signs coming our way because life gets in the way. So that's why it's telling us to take a breather. That's why it, the other side's telling us to take a step back. So it's, it's important that we know also to take care of this vessel. Go ahead, Jasper. If you don't know who your guide is, how do you talk to them? So you don't need to know the name of your guide. You don't need to know who your guide is in order to communicate with them. You just need to understand that somebody around you is guiding you and they're watching over you. A lot of people think that you have to have the name of your guide in, in order to communicate with them. You simply don't. Your guide can remain a stranger and still do their job. Go ahead, Jasper. Uh, Shannon wanted to share something. She says, when I had my reading with you, you told me that my grandfather was my guide. So when I have a dilemma, I ask him what to do. I get a clear message on whether or not to do it. I love these messages. Yes, and that's exactly them working in your, um, sorry Shannon, that was them working in your life as both reading that and then reading the comments that were going on down there. Go ahead, Jasper. Marianne says, uh, Marianne asks, can my parents know I have cancer? Yeah, your parents will know if you're sick. Your parents will know that if you're, if you're getting sick, your parents will know if you're, if, you're, if you're carrying the disease. I'll see it in your aura, more than likely, if I ever um, sit down with you. When someone has a disease, there's a dark hole in the aura. Go ahead, Jasper. Uh, do you actually have to speak or can you communicate with your thoughts? You can communicate with your thoughts, but you don't have to speak out loud. I speak out loud because I'm just so used to doing it, but um, for a lot of people I suggest don't do it before people will be looking at you weirdly. So they will. Go ahead. Uh, when you're getting advice from a guy, uh, will it always coincide with your contract? 
So yes, a great question. When you get advice from your guide, does it always coincide with your contract? Absolutely. They're not going to come in here and talk about you know um, flowers outside when you're trying to pay your mortgage. So that's that's they are going to stick directly to the thing that you worry most about and what your fear is. They're not going to come in and talk about nonsense. Go ahead, Jasper. Um, Audrey asks. I pray to the universe. I ask the universe for guidance. Does that affect my loved ones guiding me as they are in heaven? Does God have to be referenced for... So does God have to be referenced for guidance? No, absolutely not. God is not vain. God is not... This is not a being that is easily hurt to my knowledge again. This is not... A, people are angry with God all the time. So it's... it's um, you know, it's very normal. But as far as in order to get guidance, you don't have to... It's not... It's not where you, they, they know what you need, Audrey. So all you have to say is, hey guides, or hey people, or hey family, or whoever it is, I need some help here. Can you give me some clarity and take a step back and let it, let it transform? A lot of people get in their own way. They ask for help and then they take control again. No, you're not allowed to drive. Other people do that. So, I mean, that's what we're asking our guides for. Unless you're driving, then you drive. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> uh, Paula asks, what does it mean when someone visits you and it seems to happen to me? They come in dreams or apparitions. So when someone's visiting you, they're either trying to give you a sign that they're that they've made it to the other side and and that they're safe, and or they're coming to visit you in your life because there's something going on that you are not comfortable with or that you need help with. Again, the other side doesn't come through just to show us for you know kicks and, and whatnot. They come through because they're trying to give you what they need. They, they come through because they're trying to give you the guidance and the help that you need. Go ahead, Jasper. Uh, Maggie says. Also, Curry says hi. Hey, Mike. Uh, finally saw him the other day. Wow, that's a long time. I haven't seen him in a long time, so I haven't. Linda says, oh, hi, Linda. It's nice to see you in here. So, guys, I wanted to discuss, I, wa I really wanted to cover this topic um, because I, next Thursday I have a previous engagement, so it's going to be the one Facebook Live that, I, that I'm not able to do um, since we've started this on Thanksgiving, and I thank you all for doing this. But um, also, I just wanted you all to know really how the other side is working in your life and how this happens on a daily basis and what the purpose of this is. And it's not just for entertainment, but most importantly, it's about guiding you down your, your way that you go. Go ahead, Jasper. Uh, my 37-year-old daughter passed away suddenly on May 22nd of a heart attack, and her 6-year-old daughter is now... Uh, sorry, with it's hard me. for me to read. Yep. Is now with me. Her daughter... Oh no, it keeps disappearing. Um, her birthday was on Saturday, and she had balloons at her party. Last night, one of the balloons floated from their room and... Rushed around her? Yeah, I know. Touch on her. Oh, so that was so. That's your daughter trying to communicate with her daughter and showing her how this normally works. So what they'll do is they'll take something, an inanimate object, and they're able to move it, and, they, and they're trying to give a sign to the adults and the people around them that they've survived death and they know what's going on. I'm very sorry that happened. Go ahead, Jasper. So when you're coming in for a reading, will it always be guidance that you receive or will they just talk to you? Oh, both. So when you're coming in for a reading, you'll not only receive guidance, but they'll talk to you. They'll talk to you about what's going on in your life, what's happening, what, um, you know, some of the things that you should consider looking at and doing, things like that. Go ahead, Jasper. Uh, should I forgive a man who was my father but was nothing more than a memory? <laughs> Peter, it took me 22 years to get to that point. But to the answer to that question is yes. We forgive because it's poison to us. The other person doesn't care about the pain that they inflicted. But we have to let it go because it's important that we move forward with our life. Go ahead, Jasper. So should we always follow the advice that we are given? Should we always follow the advice that we were given from the other side? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're there to help you through that. They're there to show you this is the easiest way. They don't make mistakes, that I'll tell you. They don't make mistakes. What happens is life gets in the way and we can make mistakes because we can choose other um, topic or other choices and decisions, but they don't make mistakes. So it depends on what you're what you're watching. Go ahead, Jasper. Would they continue to help me if I detour? So if you detour, <laughs> if you come off your path, the other side just waits for you. So think of your path is just a straight path, and then all of a sudden you're not paying attention. You're in the reeds, right? You're just all you're in the grass and all of that. So the other side's like, oh, all right, they hit the pothole there. They're just gonna, you know. <laughs> They're just going to figure out why they're in the reeds. And then when we get back on our path, our guides continue to guide us. They continue to push us down there. So it's um, they never stop guiding us. But if we take a break, they just wait until we're ready to evolve, until we're ready to move on to the next thing. Go ahead, Jester. 
What happens when a couple comes in for guidance and they disagree on the following advice? So what happens when a couple comes in to guidance or comes in for guidance and they disagree on the advice? Well, things get pretty interesting, I'll tell you that there. Okay. <laughs> it's uh and it gets pretty hot and heavy. So again, what what happens is you have two parties that are uh, disagreeing on what their family members are saying, but there's always a middle ground. There's always something that we can agree on, why it's the safety of the kids, why it's the advancement of the children or the marriage or whatever the situation is. And once you find the middle ground, the other side says, here, let's work on this and we'll worry about these other big events after we're able to accomplish these basic events, communicating better, whatever the situation may be. So I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but whatever it may be, that's how it goes. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, Linda asks, how do you know when it's them giving you advice? How do you know when it's them giving you advice? It's clear and concise and it's direct. So you just instantly know in your head, this is the very thing that I should do. I just know I should do this. And that's the other side talking directly to you. So it's telling you that right there that, oh, I'm here with you. This is what they're doing and I'm going to move forward. You just know instantly that's coming from the, um, the other side. Hi, Dara. How, nice to see you. Um, someone's asking me about surviving death. What does suffer, suffering death mean? So I'm not really sure what that term means, but you'll not have to talk about that later, Audrey, when I see you. So anyway, so guys, I want to just wrap this up real quick. Um, again, I will not be here next Thursday because I have a previous uh, engagement. If anyone wants to book a reading, please go to philquinn.com. Um, don't leave a message on the machine at the office because your spot will be gone by the time somebody gets to it. So it's just best to go schedule your appointment directly. If anybody needs to get a hold of me, you can leave a message, but just allow up to 72 hours just because I'm backlogged. But most importantly, since we started this on Thanksgiving and, and all of that, and we've talked about all of these lessons, I'm going to take care of this vessel. Phil is taking a break. I've been at this for, um, you know, for a long time. It's been a long year, so I am, giving myself downtime for the next couple of days and I am checking out from communication from Facebook and the whole nine yards and there's a reason why I do that and I have to do that. I'm, this, is, this is something that I enjoy doing. I'm not a machine. I'm not here to bang out readings every single day And because what happens is if I get burnt out, it's going to affect the next person's reading or whatever the situation may be. So as I have told you all to practice and ground and take a moment to yourself, it is vital that I do the same thing and I give myself the time and the space that I need to regroup in order to continue doing readings because the burnout rate is just, it can get really crazy. So I'm going to take a rest. I'm not going to see you guys next Thursday, but I'll see you the following Thursday after that. If anybody needs me, go to philquinn.com and all my information is there. I thank you all um, for tuning in as, as I love doing this here. And again, I hope I explain what the life guide part of this and what a reading really is. And if anybody needs to get a hold of me, you know how to do it. I will see you in two Thursdays from now. So everyone have a great rest of July and I'll see you after that. Have a good night.